can do now. Undo all the hand stitch and take out all of these staples here. If I had looked at the notes I made, this would not have happened. Hello, hello again. In this episode, I'm continuing to make over cheap drifted finds to create an awesome bedroom for my son. I got this mid-century modern armchair for free. It's been reupholstered at some point and it may look okay on camera, but it's actually pretty dirty and dingy and the legs need to be refinished. I started off by vacuuming the chair. Even though I was going to be reupholstering it, I didn't want the loose dust and dirt to fly around when I start pulling off the fabric. So I didn't have a clue how to take this chair apart, but I found these screws underneath to start with. It looked like the armrests were held in place with them, but there was something else holding them too. I just hadn't found it yet, so I tried something else. I needed to see inside the backrest. These sides were hand stitched together and on the underside there were staples. Some more staples and off it came. There was a loose piece of wood inside and some nails. I thought I heard some rattle when I was moving it. Having test sat the chair, it's luckily very sturdy and comfortable even with this piece off. Here you can see how faded the fabric actually is. As I go, I'm trying to save as much information as I can. I'm writing here where this piece of fabric was. I'm also taking some close-up photos to help me remember how everything was done. I'm also writing down every stage as I take apart the upholstery, starting from the bottom of the page and moving up as I go. This way I'll have the upholstery stages in order, starting from the beginning. Now that all the upholstery is off, I'm refinishing the legs. They are not detachable, so I'll have to do them first so I don't tarnish the new upholstery. My hand sanding is just not doing the trick, so I decided to try out this eco paint stripper. Now at this point I was doing something else and also waiting for the new fabric to arrive, so I totally forgot about this. By the time I got back to this project, the stripper was pretty dried up. Anyway, after I scraped off what I could, I took the chair to our downstairs bathroom to wash off any residue left. I tried to avoid filming in this bathroom because it's pretty bad. It was redone by the previous owner over 20 years ago. I have huge plans for it though. I want to demo everything and change the floor plan quite a bit. To do that I need to touch the load bearing walls. It's going to be a big and expensive reno and so I haven't been able to do that yet. But once it happens it's going to be epic. Is that something you would be interested in seeing? Comment below, I would love to know. I'm staining the legs in the color walnut. I wanted to bring the chair's look back closer to its original era, which I think is the 70s, so I ordered a dark green fabric and the walnut color will go nicely with that. Very soon I could tell the old finish wasn't completely off and the result was uneven. That was a huge bummer, but I decided to see if a couple of coats would still do the trick. So the fabric finally arrived. I didn't want to spend a lot on it because this is a part of a budget-friendly makeover for my son's bedroom. The complete makeover will be the next episode, so if you want to see how everything comes together, please subscribe to my channel. This fabric is chenille. It's a velvety material and it's sturdy and durable. I'm starting with the armrests and I'm just using the old pieces of upholstery as my pattern. I want to be super accurate with my measurements for the best fit possible, so I'm going to draw on the fabric exactly where I want my seams to go. This time-lapse is a more accurate representation of the color on the fabric. 
Here I'm just stapling the fabric onto the armrests. Now this chair is not super stunning on its own. It was probably a cheap chair already back when it was made. And where I do really appreciate MCM, it's not the style closest to my heart. But our apartment was built in 1968 and I want to incorporate that mid-century modern style into our interior to tie it in with the building. I wouldn't want to do everything in that style because it can easily look a bit museum-like in my opinion. What I do love is eclectic and that is how I can fuse everything together. So that's my design reasoning behind this chair. Good design is not so much about having stunning expensive pieces all over, but more about how they all work together and form design where the sum is greater than the individual pieces. Here I'm working on the backrest, just going super slow, trying to figure out how it's supposed to go back on. Once I had the side stapled, I realized the top staple was on a little bit too tight. So I removed it and stapled the top. Then I started working on the corners. Now I think the corners are so important and usually the part that reveals if it's done by a professional or a DIYer. I'm not a professional, but I'll take as long as it takes to get these corners looking right. Then I moved on to the little front panel. This seam here is not actually going to be visible since the seat cushion will go on top of it, but I'd still like it to be nice and neat. So I clamped a ruler on to get a straight line for the staples. Then I started working on the back panel. This is the point where things start going wrong. Comment below if you know what it is. Okay, so I did the back, I hand stitched the sides, it's all perfect, really really good, I even surprised myself, but then I went to put on the armrests. The armrests are so well done, except there's three screw holes that attach the armrests. And I can get to these two, but I can't get to the one here. Yeah, basically that has to be done before you put the back in. If I had looked at the notes I made, maybe it would, this would not have happened. I just kept thinking that it'll be so much easier to hand stitch this when this is not on here, kind of in front of the seam or right next to it. And the only thing I can do now is undo all the hand stitching here and take out all of these staples here and on the sides too a little bit and open up the panel and then I can get there. Uh, and after that I can attach the arm rests and do all of this all over again. If you're going to reupholster something like this, get yourself a good tool for removing staples. These little cutters made this whole thing so much more bearable. They came with a 3D printer, but I use them for almost everything I do. I will put a link in the description for you. Luckily, I didn't have to undo the hand stitching completely. I could squeeze my hand in there and screw the remaining screws in. Deja vu. The last 
last thing left to make is the seat cover for the seat cushion. I'm going to be filming the reveal in the living room because I'm already working on the bedroom makeover and I don't want to give it up just yet. That will be in my next video, so please subscribe to my channel if you want to see how it turns out. I hope you enjoyed this DIY and thank you for watching!